Hello, and welcome to How to Make Six Figures an Hour, a lightning talk on rapid prototyping data visualizations. My name is Jane Adams. I'm a PhD student at Northeastern University with a specialization in data visualization. First, credit is where credit is due. Uh, I can't claim uh, full authorship of the title of this talk. I was inspired by this tweet by Eric, which is How to Make Six Figures a Day in Grad School, and he has some great suggestions there. So why make data visualizations? Well, a quick viz can reveal some really wild information that's hidden in your data. So some folks might already be familiar with Anscom's quartet. Another version of this narrative that I love is the Data Source Dozen by Autodesk. Uh, and basically what we're seeing here on the right is a series of data sets that all have the same summary statistics, the same mean, the same standard deviation, and the same correlation. But when we plot them, we can see that they're drastically different. And actually there's a dinosaur hiding in one of our data sets. So if we hadn't visualized this data, we might not have seen that hidden story. Second, recognize where you're at. So what tools are already in your toolbox? Uh, a lot of people are kind of distracted by all of the new interesting stuff that's out there. And absolutely, there's a lot of really exciting data visualization tools uh, in the web universe right now. Um, but maybe think about kind of what you're most familiar with and what is a logical next step in terms of uh, a data visualization library or package that you could learn given the skills that you already have. So I've compiled a list of a bunch of libraries for uh, these different sorts of categories of coder, um, including no code tools. And all of these uh, libraries are clickable links in the um, uh, provided materials that I have here. Um, but as you can see, even within each uh, language, there are a lot of different options. And so what I would recommend you do is go through some of the uh, graph galleries for these different libraries and decide which one has the functionality that you need, first of all, and then which ones uh, make the most sense. As you start to read through the code and look at how they're specifying how to create a graph, does it kind of pass the gut check in terms of what makes sense to you and your coding style. Next, what we want to do is create a visual hypothesis. So oftentimes what we want to do, um, kind of our inclination is to start coding right away. Um, but sometimes it's best to actually sketch first. So just grab a piece of paper and a pen. Doesn't have to be beautiful. Um, but what do you expect the chart to look like? So you might have some theory that uh, if I plot time on the x-axis and I pl plot a value on the y-axis, I would expect my bars to uh, be increasing in size. But oftentimes, our expectation does not meet our reality, both in life and in visualization. So create a visual hypothesis. And then if what you code doesn't actually match what you had sketched out, that's a story in and of itself. Always apply KISS methodology to anything you do with code. Um, this applies to visualization too, so keep it simple, Smarty. Minimize your data to ink ratio and avoid visual clutter. So a lot of times these tools will have um, additional bells and whistles that are built in, uh, but just because you can add 3D and shading and gradients and extra lines to your chart, um, maybe it's best to start simple. And sometimes actually you may find that you need to simplify the visualizations uh, from what's already included in the package. So you might find that um, you need to remove grid lines in order to keep your visualization simple. So that data to ink ratio is a good thing to keep in mind. So basically you wanna have the maximum amount of data for the minimum amount of ink. And then iterate, iterate, and iterate. Um, so remember in that earlier step how we picked easy tools that we already knew? This is the reason why. So if you're working with something that's really complicated, you kind of have this um, high barrier to entry and you get kind of precious about your charts and you don't want to um, make a whole bunch of charts because it takes a lot of time investment to do each one. So if we start simple with tools that are familiar to us, it gives us a lot more ability to make a lot of charts in a short amount of time. This is a great gift that I love from Nadia Bremer's blog, um, which shows her visualization bloopers and process notes for the creation of um, one particular chart that she made. And you can see that she went through a lot in the process before finally settling on a final visualization. 
Another step, so once you've done a lot of iteration and um, you've looked at your visual hypothesis and you're starting to form a story, this is where annotation is your best friend. So once you've found your story, you need to tell it right there on the chart because you're not always going to be there standing next to your chart in order to point out things to people and say, hey, look at this particular subset or look at this portion of the chart uh, or uh, Sometimes if you are creating an interactive visualization, people aren't going to be able to hover over them if they're then printed in a PDF. So as much as possible, use annotation. And Lisa Charlotte Muth has a really great blog post on using text and visualizations, which I've linked in the supplemental materials. So to recap, visualization is important. Never trust summary statistics. Familiar is fine. You don't have to use every shiny new tool unless you're an R user and shiny is the tool you want to use. Uh, sketch it out. You don't have to be Picasso to put pen to paper. Just do a lot of doodles and think about what you expect to see in your data. Sweet simplicity. Don't over overcomplicate with shading, lines, 3D, all those bells and whistles uh, until you've really done a lot of iteration. Which brings us to make a million versions. It's better to be in the habit of iterating than to be precious. Six figures an hour should probably be your minimum when you're looking at exploratory data analysis. If you can, try to make a visualization every couple minutes. And once again, it's why it's really important to start with simple, simple tools and uh, use what is most familiar to you. And finally, tell a story. So use annotation and emphasis to craft the narrative. I hope this is helpful.